Welcome to the calculus course. I'm going to have you start out for 3.1 actually watching a video rather than going from the text and this video is on YouTube. I also have it linked up at my website but what this is called is calculus in 20 minutes and what you will find is a guy that's talking really fast because he's trying to sum up the essential pieces of calculus in 20 minutes and the clip actually here that I have linked is only 10 minutes because it's a clip but otherwise um, I want you to watch here four minutes at least you can watch the whole I think it's like 10 minutes but you can watch the whole thing but really the four minutes is the one the the piece that I want you to catch so your study of calculus is going to lead towards what he is talking about and what I expect is that you're going to be confused after you've watched it but then give it some time because in about two weeks we're gonna come back to this again and you're gonna find that it's awesome because you understand everything that he is talking about okay so after you have watched that video you've gotten 3.1 out of the way man we're moving fast we're on to 3.2 I'd like you to come back to this video finish this up and this is going to be looking at 3.2 a study of limits limits is a big thing that we're trying to understand in this section the objective is going to be to understand math language specifically the calculus language because one of the tr well first of all the trickiest thing about calculus is actually the all the algebra and all the little steps that we have to do that are just algebra um, getting past that algebra but the other tricky thing about calculus is the notations and understanding what something like this means so you're going to be coming across this notation and this is something that you're not going to get rid of this is going to be throughout the calculus course so the informal definition we're actually not going to go over the formal de definition you'll get that in college the informal definition is basically looking at a function and studying its behavior of a function around a certain x value. It could be any function and you're going to be asking yourself what is the y, this is f of x or it has also been associated with y in the past, it's the dependent variable. What is our y values doing as x gets closer and closer to some sort of value c? And you're going to be able to put a value on that. What you're answering is what is y doing as x gets closer and closer to a certain value? Here's what this might look like in a textbook. You wouldn't get this portion of it. You would just have to ask yourself, all right, the limit of 2x. So what's the behavior of our function 2x at around x equals 2? So you're going to be able to put a number on that. An analogy about all of this is basically in these problems you're a detective and you want to figure out what is y doing at around x. So I have a, I have a picture. All right. When you come across this, it's our big mystery. This is our mystery that we're trying to solve and you're going to be given some sort of function and given some sort of time or some sort of place that you want to you want to observe this function. So, you're going to be like, "Hey function, hey function, what's what's going on?" And the function's going to be all shifty-eyed. That's my picture. So, you're going to find out what that function is up to at a given value. So here's the thing to note. On a test, I could give you something like this. You don't know what the function is exactly, but you do have the relation, the independent-dependent relationship going on. Um, when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. You could even graph this if you want, plot these points. But the thing is, I could ask you on the test, what does the function appear to be doing as x approaches 3? So you're going to be looking at these x values, and this is your time of focus, and you're going to be asking yourself, well, around this time, leading up to, and um, the times after, what was y, or what is our function, appear to, behaving, to be behaving like? Okay, so you're going to be answering this question right here. But instead of me asking you this, what does the function appear to be doing as x approaches 3? Every single time. Or what does the function appear to be doing at around x equals 12? Okay, on a test. I'm not going to be asking you this question every time because instead I'm going to write this. And your question, what this is saying, is what is the function, what is our function approaching as x approaches 3? And you're going to be able to say, well, in this case, solve our mystery. What's it, what's it? approaching well four so that is one numerical way um, of solving these limits 
Okay, so this is number six on your homework. And here we go. So here's our function that we're studying. I don't know what the heck that looks like, but it doesn't really matter if you know how to graph that or not. The idea is, can you figure out, as the detectives that you are, can you figure out what is this function doing at around four? So what to do? If you're at a loss right now, well, apply what we just did in this previous slide. Set up a chart. Look at values that are around x equals four. Look at the, the values leading up to four, getting closer and closer to four. I chose very small increments, but that's what you want to do. That's actually part of that formal definition. You can choose a small of increments. You want to choose tiny, tiny increments. Get closer and closer to that four, as close as you can get, and then figure out what, what it's approaching. So I'm going to go ahead and type these into my calculator, or actually I already did. So I typed these into my calculator. This is what I got. So again, algebra. You're going to be plugging these values, 3.9, into your function. What was the function doing at 3.9? Well, this function equals 0 0.0408. Okay. What was the function doing at 3.99? So in, for all my x's, I plugged in 3.99. Well, that's going to be 0 0.04008. And then when I plugged in 3.99, I can already kind of see what it's doing from this side. But I also want to go from the other side. I want to make sure that I know I get all scopes of this, this x equals, or of this function as x approaches 4. So from both sides, I'm going to be looking at it. And what you can see is from both sides, what is this function? What is y approaching? So again, I see this limit. I want to figure out what is this function approaching at this given given value. So um, first of all, I hope you can go ahead and give me your answer here. What would you say? A point zero four. So one thing to, no to note is it does not matter what f of four is. Notice I did not have a four in here. Okay. Uh, because if you would notice, if you plugged in f of 4, f of 4 would be of our function, this is our function right here, it would be 4 over 4 plus 1 minus 4 over 5 all over 4 minus 4. And I don't know if you see a problem with that. I'm going to keep going. Um, eventually you're probably going to see a problem, hopefully. Ah, there's my problem. Okay, not only that, if you did uh, continued on simplify the whole thing, it's 0 over 0. So that's garbage. Once again, garbage. So we can't have that. Um, but I'm not concerned with, with what f of 4 was. I wanted to know what was the behavior leading up to 4. So that's not my concern. This is something to keep in mind. The limit of a function f of x as x approaches c never depends on what happens when x is equal to c. Okay, so keep that in mind. The limits are different. Limits are strictly going to be looking at the behaviors around that value. I really uh, liked in the video when the speaker was talking about opening the window. Before we were concerned at what was at this value, let's, let's call it c, what was f of c? So when you figured out what f of c is equal to, we would find some sort of value. But we're not concerned with that anymore. What we're concerned with is opening that window and looking around that value. So everything leading up until that value is what we're concerned with. What is this suggesting that it's doing? Okay. So we've just learned how to find the limit numerically, which involves setting up a chart. That's one way to do it. But keep in mind, charts are just plot points, so we could also do it graphically. Or we could be provided with a graph and then be asked to find a limit. So I'm going to ask you, what does the function appear to be doing as x approaches negative 1? But I'm not going to ask you that, right? Because I'm going to ask you it in this notation. So here you've been giving a graph. And what you're going to have to do is, see that detective there? That's you, and you're trying to figure out what does this graph behave like from the sides as x gets closer and closer to negative 1 from both directions. And what you're going to be seeing is what is what does it appear to be doing as we're getting closer and closer to this value x equals negative 1. That is 0. I also wanted to present this problem to you just as a reminder that it does not matter what's actually happening at this value c. Okay, so I could have also written this problem, the limit 
and then actually filled in the function that we have of interest. So it doesn't necessarily matter what's happening at sine or f of 0, which is going to be sine of 0 over 0, because this is equal to 0 over 0, which is that garbage scenario. You can also see that we have a hole happening. So when you're, when you're looking at these values leading up to that x value 0, understand what you are doing is you're looking at the behavior of that function around that, that value. So I, if you wanted to, you could even type in, do your numerical analysis of it. Look at, for example, negative 1 or negative point zero, uh, negative point five, or negative point one, negative point zero one, and then also approach it from the other side too, don't forget that, so point five, so remember we're getting closer and closer to zero from both sides, and you're going to be asking yourself, what's it doing in these, these y values? But otherwise you can look at this graph as well and saying, well these points, they're the y values are getting so close to 1 on both sides as you approach it from this side the y values are still getting very close to 1 and that's what the behavior is doing okay so don't be afraid to see something goofy happening actually at that that c value you're looking at what's going on around it here's the last scenario that I'm going to bring up to you you need to also look at, this is emphasis on that you need to look at both sides, what's it doing from both sides. So I'm going to, oops, if you were presented with this function and you needed to figure out what limit or what is the value that it approaches as x is getting closer to zero. So you're approaching zero from both sides. Let's block off this side for now. Okay, and let's just look at this, this left hand side. As our values are getting closer to zero, what are the y values doing? Well, if you were to plug in, if you were to look at this chart wise instead of graphically, let's look at negative t. All of these values, they're negative one. It's a constant. It's staying at negative one all the way. So what's y approaching? Well, y is ever going towards negative one, it seems, from this side. If you were to approach it from this side, so I'm going to fill in 3 from this direction. Let's look at 2, 1, point 1. And what you can see here is it's another constant, and those are all at 1. So can you agree upon, at this, this central, at 0, can you agree upon what they are approaching? And the fact is no, you can't. So there is a possibility, there is a possibility of an answer. Answer does not exist does exist. You can look at a behavior of a function and say things aren't adding up here. I don't have a fixed value that I can set on that. This is the answer D and E. Okay, so don't be afraid of that as well. So I'm going to quickly um, fly through these. I, I would encourage you to give this a pause. Oops, this should be four. Give this a pause and try to figure these out on your own. So pause me at this moment. Try to figure these out and I'm going to fly through these otherwise. So here we have our crazy piecewise function going on up here, but once again, if this is my function and I'm observing it at these particular values, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to focus on this x equals zero values. I'm going to look at the graph and see that from both sides we're approaching the value of two here. I'm also going to zero in on x equals one. I'm going to approach this value of one what was our function doing at around one o'clock? So uh, what you're going to see is from this direction, it appears that our function from the right, from the right, oops, that's the left, excuse me, from the left, it appeared that it was getting closer and closer to the value of one. The y's were, were getting closer to the value one. That's what it seemed like it was suggesting it was doing. But then from the right, this function, as I got closer to one, seemed like it was approaching 3. Things don't add up. This function is very shifty. Um, D and E is what you would have to write. As a detective, you're not able to put a value on it. Things weren't adding up. Okay, so there we have it. So here is your homework. What you have learned in this video, you have learned what limits are, what, when we're studying limits, what we're just trying to do is figure out a y value that or these functions are approaching at a certain given x approach. 
Okay. And then what you've also learned are two methods in solving or evaluating these limits. You've learned the numerical way, which involves charts, and you've also looked at graphs, so the graphical method. So there you have it, and see you again.